Hi guys, I'm Naga Derchan, and welcome to my review for Babylon episode 8 and episode 9. The previous last episode was actually very... it happened some time ago, but I still remember it very clearly. So I'm glad these following episodes were more slower and kind of more chill window, not exactly. And I'm apologizing for my voice. I have stuffed nose and I'm a little bit ill. So I'm apologizing for any inconvenience. I hope you will understand me. <laughs> so episode 8 kind of starts with Seizaki. And they are showing us his mental state, which is not the best, <laughs> which is undisturbable because what all all the stuff we he like he experienced and what happened because he was sitting in some kind of bar and he was watching TV and there was uh, in news about voting like about a suicide love and was split fifty fifty so I was like well that went really fast I don't really like where this is going. And the worst thing was that he was actually seeing people which died and he wasn't able to save and they were like talking to him and kind of like talking about the whole Itsuki problem and my Magasa problem and the suicide problem. So it was really fucked up. Like the dude is really in not great mental state right now. And the worst thing is that not only he's like was talking with his dead friends, but he was like on the street and he thought he saw Magase and ran after her and almost got hit a car by a car. Hit a car. That would be interesting. Almost was hit by a car. And then he was like sawing, seeing Magase everywhere. So she really got into him. And he's getting a slightly bit paranoid, which I really don't like because I really don't want Seizaki to experience, well, he had some mental breakdown lately. But like, yeah, he's not feeling very well. And also he's extremely confused about like all of this justice stuff. He doesn't know like anymore what justice means to him because when he was interrogating Magasa he was when she was asking him he was very he knew stuff and he was sure about it but now he's not that sure anymore and it's exactly what Magasa wants he she's just playing with him she's having a great fun I would say so yeah, it really hurt me to see him in that state, still, like, but even still, like, the stuff he went through and he's still, like, able to continue and function, damn, like, the determination and the strong mentality, even though it's breaking, Seizaki is a really great man, I would say. So he went, uh to zoo with his family. I guess he was at home because he really needed to kind of like uh, be at home and not think about his dead friends and he, need, he definitely needs some vacation after this if he will survive it. So yeah, and like even his family noticed that he's kind of sad and a little bit different than usually. So his family is like super supportive, but like every time his family is bred, I'm like, damn, still with these fucking dead flags, I don't want anything to happen to his family because that would definitely break this guy down. I mean, he was broken a little bit, well, broken a little bit after what happened to like his assistant, which was brutal, too brutal. And like if something like that would happen to his family, there are usually two options. He would either go totally crazy and probably kill himself, or he would go totally crazy and probably would kill Magasa or do something like that. 
So yeah, options. Huh. Yeah, I just hate it when his family is like always there and I have feeling something bad is going to happen to them. And on top of that, Magase is sending him presents and Kana with questions. And this time she sent him a present with two eggs. And there was a question like, which one is the bad one? Hi. I really love her. She's such a great and amazing villain. I love it. If I was Seizaki, I would just absolutely immediately change my house, home, address, whatever. I would not want to be there. Especially with my like family. Then uh, Seizaki went to his job and it doesn't look good. Because everything went to shit and Nomaru, the politician, can't stop Itsuki anymore because this whole stuff just is piling up and just, it's like a huge snowball. It's just piling up and going down the slope and you can't stop it. That's exactly Itsuki and his suicide law. Well, so that's not good. Nobody can basically stop him now unless something interesting happens. Uh, Seizek even asked his newspaper article guy to like put article about what happened in that studio where like all his friend mass suicide but he was like I just can't do that because it's totally unbelievable especially because of Magus's powers like nobody would believe me and they would think I'm I went completely bonkers they just I, I can't do that I would lose my job man <laughs> So that didn't succeed. And after that, yeah, suicide law was getting to put into effect in Shin Shiniki? Yeah, in Shiniki. Uh nukes that euthanasia drug or what it was was also like distributed. So it was really grim, it was looking really grim that Seizeki basically lost and Itsuki and Magasa are doing whatever they want to do. Yeah, that, that really didn't look very great. Even the guy who is his boss was like, I'm really sorry, like, what we kinda did to you because we, like, put you into this case and all the stuff you went through, I'm really, really sorry you need, yeah, like, you experienced that and... It was like really depressing, I would say. And he resigned, which I can understand because they wanted Itsuki and the suicide law. But like they kind of wanted it not so sudden and so extreme. They wanted to kind of like, you know, gradually building up to it. And Itsuki was like, fuck that, I'm just doing it right now, right here. <laughs> yep, that didn't work well. But Shiniki wasn't only town which got this law, it was also in Canada or some city. And that's not good, like Canada is like overseas, very close to US, so FBI got involved. <laughs> because like Seizaki I think was in his home and somebody like knocked on his door and then FBI opened up, so okay, this went very very big. I mean, when FBI is involved, we know something big is going to happen every time. And Seizaki was willing to help them investigate a suicide in the studio. I think they were talking about a suicide in the studio, maybe even on the roof. Well, they just wanted to investigate these mass suicides. What's happening? What is wrong? And Sezaki was like, yeah, I'm going to help you, but I have one condition. So, okay, there is a Seizaki FBI working together. Good news. Then we jumped straight to US. I was like, okay. Straight to some absolutely random guy. And we, like, saw his whole kind of life, which was very interesting. And I really love this introduction. Like, out of nowhere, some guy in the US, you are seeing his life, who is, like, was sickly as a kid, but then he determined, he was determined 
to kind of like uh, study and be better. So he went to university and such, he was very clever. And then he like went to, into games, he was playing some RPG like Runescape or something like that. It looked like that. All times, you know. And he like in the game, he was best of the best. And he met some newbie there, which was actually a girl, and he like helped her through this game. And suddenly she wanted to meet with him, so they met, and she was super freaking hot and good looking. And he was kind of like taken aback by that, because he couldn't believe such a hot, cool looking chick could be with him. And like she persuaded him, kind of, and I think she liked like his personality and the fact that he is so amazing and really clever and you know this guy is a big thinker when he wants to do something he thinks about it a lot so they kind of married and has kid and his whole life is super duper crew super duper crazily awesome and he has a lot of accomplishments so that's cool i would say yeah some people from fbi and from white house um, I don't know how these people are called, like some secretaries or, you know, the people who works with president and kind of like with his stuff. I I'm not very well versed in that, you know, I don't know, something like secretaries and people which helps him with stuff. So they were like discussing this whole like suicide problematic. Also, that's why FBI is involved. Because France also, like some city in France got involved and now is going to have a suicide law. And because town in the US like is going to have this suicide law, so of course people in US, especially in White House, didn't like it. Like, okay, this weird stuff about suicide is okay it's in our country. And you know how people from United States are... There are a lot of Christians and suicide is considered a sin, so I can totally see that they won't be like behind it at all. They would not like it at all. And it seemed very like suspicious that yeah, Japan, okay, do whatever you want, but why is it spreading to the world? That seems very fishy, right? Especially like in the US over the seas, such a crazy idea, especially in a like country which is very Christian like and you know, Bible and stuff and suicide being sin, that doesn't kind of make sense, actually. They were investigating that and of course they wanted to talk with this. They wanted to talk with president about this. And we were shown that a guy, where, which like we jumped to, was actually a president in the US, which I really like because he seems like a really cool guy. I mean, a gamer? A president? Uh, I like that. Also, he's seems like very hot is a nice guy. So, very clever person as a president who will be helping with this case. That sounds extremely good. So, I really like this episode, even though it was way slower than previous ones. It was more of introduction of like these US people and it seems like it's going to be more and more interesting because now we are on world scale now. We move to US because it seems like not only Japan but the whole world is into this now, sadly. So yeah, I really I really love like the build up to this president. Because it seemed out of nowhere, but I definitely knew there is some significance. And then, like, I love the small, tiny cuts they did. Like, there was, like, pictures of him doing some stuff, and then... And there was, like, a cut to White House, and these cuts kind of continued. Or a cut to, like, US flag. I was like, I have a feeling that because they took this guy out of nowhere, he has some big significance. And I felt like he might be a president and he was a president which totally makes sense because they introduced him so suddenly <laughs> but i really like the guy he seems very interesting so yeah 
Uh, and I'm going to give this episode 8 out of 10 because yeah, it was more slower and it seemed a little bit out of nowhere with the president guy, even though I really like him. He seems like a cool personality, which can bring a lot of interesting stuff to this show. Yeah, I'm really wondering where this will go because we have like only a few episodes left. Three of them now only? Like, I was a little bit confused where it is going, because before we were in Japan and Saizaki fighting at Magase or trying to investigate investigate the stuff, and suddenly we are with, like, in US with FBI and, like, president, like, okay, where this is going to? Like, okay, this is uh, different. But now I like when I'm looking retrospectively, I, I quite like it, yeah. Really like it. I was just kind of confused. <sighs> so, 8 out of 10. Babylon episode 9. Yeah, this... Even though I was kind of confused by a previous episode, this episode started, like, kind of shoot up again. And I realized that I really like this, like, US idea, and especially President is now working on the case. Like, he's such a great president. Can I please have someone like this in my country as president, please? <laughs> yeah, idol president. I guess that's why this is a fantasy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so, this president guy, I don't remember his name. Alfred or something like that? Woods. I think his surname was Woods. Woody Woods? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> cool guy, I would say. So, he and his office people were discussing this whole problematic of suicides, especially because now it's in their country, which doesn't sound so good. So, President, Mr. President, decided to call a mayor of that US city to, where the suicide law is going to be, or is now happening to be, or is, I think... Yeah, this city actually has the suicide law in process now. So he was talking with this mayor, and from the first glance I could say that this mayor obviously is kind of nervous. I mean, I don't know if I would be nervous if president spoken to me, but like he's mayor of a city, so... He probably meets important people, like, very often, so he shouldn't be so nervous. So immediately I was like, there is something shady going on, definitely. <laughs> and he was, like, has very nice speech about, like, um, about his duty, how he needs to make his residence safe and healthy and prosperous in life and such kind of stuff, you know, which is also very nice. <laughs> And the president was asking him, like, yeah, I can understand that, but don't you think you kind of, like, rushed it? You even didn't investigate this law. Like, you didn't make sure there is nothing very dangerous about it. That was, like, too sudden, you know, guy, man. That's... There need to be some processes and you skip them. Something like that. And the mayor was like, well... The reason is kind of abstract, hard to exactly tell what. So I was like, okay, this is getting more and more fishy and I don't like it. There is something behind it, definitely. So I start talking about history. I was like, man, what's your deal, you Please speak up. And it was about that he wants to be kind of like in a waiter or frontier of this Andia, Andia, idea in this country, which kind of makes sense. But still, like, this is very dangerous law, and you didn't inspect it. You didn't look much into it because you just... It was very sudden, so... It's still... Um, I can understand it the same as President, Mr. President said. But... Same as him, I don't like the idea. <laughs> Even though I'm not, like, into Christianity or any kind of religion, I still don't like the idea because there is just too many stuff behind it and it's not so easy to decide, you know, who has a right to commit suicide and who does not. That's just, just a huge topic to speak about with people 
then just suddenly decide to have this idea working in my city, like, you should probably speak with people about it, you know, like, maybe. Yeah, I love this president. And what was kind of funny was that in the end of them talking, he was just casually threatening this man, like, well, we'll see about it, like, I hope nothing bad will happen and such, or, you know, some troops may appear in your city. <laughs> yeah, I really love, like, and <laughs> he looks so cute while saying that, like, yeah, I'm so casual about it. Goodbye, mayor. So that was really funny. So then one of his office people, I don't know, like, how they're called. Mm secretaries or something like that i guess because it seems like they have a lot of saying in what is happening i'm not much into politics okay especially about country which is so far away from mine <laughs> um so one of these people was thinking that there might be some conspiracy because this was too sudden and it was these like countries having it kind of at the same time so it seems they are probably collabing about this behind all of this which actually makes sense i was like oh yeah that really makes sense yeah that they are working together on this so yeah and also president thinks that it's like he probably has something up his sleeves and that this is not only thing he's doing, which I was like, oh, it seems dangerous. Please don't do anything bad. Yeah, it's like a sly bitch, even though he looks magnificent. So don't trust him at all. And president wanted to actually talk with Itsuki because some guy just casually mentioned like, why? Yeah, why don't you ask him personally? And president was like, oh, well, actually I can do that maybe. <laughs> But it didn't work because we all know how dangerous Itsuki is and even one of his people was like I don't think this is a good idea. We definitely won't let you to contact him because he would definitely turn this around against you and for him So poor president was like a little looks so sad that he couldn't talk with him because that would probably gave him some questions answers well big questions too but it's okay it's just too dangerous for that because if he definitely like this talk with it's okay and president of us would definitely watch like probably the whole world so if it's okay would be able to turn it around the whole world would be making suicide law to work so into work so that would be very dangerous and we don't want that because there's something definitely going behind and we don't like that <laughs> so they were definitely feeling there would be someone behind of that and someone like having involvement on this they're very clever people i liked it and then seizaki was meeting with president and i really love this because they are going to work together which is amazing and he like gave him all the info about this suicide law and what happened in Japan and about manga and such. Seizaki actually thinks, which I really don't like, that Itsuki wants all the countries to have this suicide law. And he thinks he will bring something really, really bad or do something really, really bad about it. And I don't really like it. Like... What can you do? What's your goal? It's okay. Are you just some crazy psycho? I, I really don't know, but I don't really like it. What he's trying to do? I don't know, but what Seizaki said, I really didn't like it because it sounded extremely ominous. And then Seizaki wanted to be part of FBI, which I was like, yay! My bow is raising their ranks. <laughs> so even the FBI guys, or was it FBI guy? Oh, the guy who was working with president, I don't remember now. We're recommending him because, firstly, he is very, very good about what he's doing, like in his work. They notice, which isn't great. Like, he's very capable. Also, because he's a witness, so if he would be close to them, they can, like, kinda, you know, make sure he won't die or nobody would kill him or something like that. And, <laughs> 
for the third time. The Thraken is that he is quite dangerous with his kind of obsession about getting Magasa. And they think he is hiding something. So they want him to be close because of the, all of this. So like, I really love how these people are thinking. They're so clever. <laughs> so yeah, Seizaki is now part of FBI. And he's like, uh, he was sent with other FBI guy to investigate that town in US where this law was functioning now. This whole like episode, president was just thinking so freaking deeply. And I love that every time he's thinking deeply, he's just scratching his nose and thinking. That's like very small and nice detail. I love it. He's kind of like Al from that, you know, that he is like his little thinking quirk. That's pretty cool, I would say. So Seizaki and his FBI partner went to the town, which I don't know on its name, so I'm sorry. And they questioned the mayor, like which moment he decided to like take this suicide law or what exactly made him. And his like answer was very, you know, it actually wasn't a very good answer because you kind of can't make anything out of it. He just quoted Mark Twain, which is like good quote, but it kind of doesn't help you anything. So yeah, Seizaki was looking for clues if I guess this guy was influenced by Magasa. Because they think she is probably in VS, which would make sense, maybe. And the mayor visited some patients in some hospital and there were some women. So they went to investigate that, but it, but it wasn't the case. Like it wasn't her on the picture they saw. And actually there was someone calling mayor from a hospital like it was i think someone calling to hospital to talk with mayor which is very sneaky i don't like that <laughs> very sneaky because i think like someone wanted to thank mayor and now wasn't in there so that person didn't have opportunity to thank them if they can if they kindly please like, let this person on the phone talk with Mayor. Well, that's, that's like super sneaky, and I don't really like that. Magasa is quite a villain, I love it. <laughs> so they listen to the call, at least. Oh my god, oh my god, the hospital recorded it all, that call. And it was, of course, it was Magasa, she was talking with Mayor. Oh my god, her voice. Every time I hear it, I have chills, like. And goosebumps, like she is carrying me. This woman is super freaking hella scary. Just listening to her voice, yeah. And not the good stuff is that the moment Sizaki was hearing it, he like, it seemed like it did have some kind of effect of him, or he felt like she's talking directly to him. So it didn't seem very good, and I don't know if it was him thinking that. Or if actually Magasa somehow did that, she talked with Mayor, but she knew Seizaki would definitely go and listen to this call. So she somehow made it that some messages for him. Because we don't know what her powers are, if it is like something actually possible or if it is from fantasy land. We don't know, and even though if it would be for, from fantasy land, I'm up to it. Like, really, I'm up to it. So it really didn't look good for Seizaki, and I hope he is not, like, weaker and weaker towards her powers, because so far it didn't do anything to him. Yeah, but it's not good. Like, Seizaki, please hold yourself. Also, what I noticed is that... Like, on the call, on the recording, you can see that every time before she spoken, there was some, like, a little weird noise. Which was showing on the recording, like, some popping, and I'm like... I'm definitely sure that they are showing this, because it has some kind of significance. So, what does it mean? What does she do with her voice? 
what is there like what kind of thing is here in play I don't understand but the fact that she can do this even through a phone is extremely disturbing and crazy like seriously the moment I hear her I'm just freaking out I'm like please nobody listen to her don't get killed please and I love it she's such a great villain and some people don't like her because I don't know from what I've read she doesn't have reason or motivation or something like that and I mean do you need a motivation to be evil can just some people be evil because they are evil I usually don't like female villains because they are very blandly made and they are usually not that interesting and they're like convictions and reasons are usually very poorly made but when a female villain is done right I really love it and so far I would say my most favorite female villains are is Magasa Ai and Medusa from Cell Leader and I think I ever met as great a female villain as this because both of them are so freaking disturbing and just I hate what they are doing, but I love them as characters. Oh god, it's just, you love to hate them, you know? And that doesn't happen too much with, like, female villain characters for me. Oh, I'm Megasa, one of the best female villains in long time I've encountered. Good job, Babylon, good job. So I'm giving this episode 8 and half out of a 10, because still there was kind of, like, exposition-y stuff and working and what's going to happen and I really love this president he's a cool guy please think about something great and yeah this kind of reminds me a little bit of that note like investigating and thinking it wouldn't be bad if they would go the right route we have someone very clever on one side and someone very clever on the second side so yeah I really love it it like, from the start, this show kind of remember me of that, no, like, kind of trying to out with the villain, but I think now we finally have the L on the scene because President seems extremely clever and I really love it. So, I wonder how this will wrap up because we have very few episodes left and I don't want this to, like, end up pretty amazingly though it still might end in the worst way possible which would be even more impactful I would say if it would end like the whole world destroyed or complete failure that would be oof 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 that would hurt <laughs> I probably wouldn't mind that though <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to the next three episodes and I just, I'm really loving this. It's really cool. Goodbye. See you next time.